where do we get hypertension from? It's a, the high pressure, just as it says, it's a high pressure of the blood within the arteries and the veins of the body. So where do we get that from? Okay, basically there are several reasons or causes that we may have hypertension. We'll discuss that as we go. So basically it is when hypertension is when a force of blood against the artery walls of our body is too high. We're gonna talk about the numbers. So one may ask, what is a high blood pressure? Mine is 135 over 82, is that high? So we'll discuss some of the numbers and you know, get an idea of what is high blood pressure versus um, if we are in a crisis or which, which stage of the high blood, uh, hypertension we are, okay? Um, our bodies and arteries have these ves vessels that carry rich oxygen, rich uh, blood away from the heart. So as we breathe in, we breathe in oxygen, the blood comes back to the body through the veins, it picks up the oxygen, it goes to other parts of the body. But keep in the back of your mind, we are talking about the vessels that carry the blood, also the heart that pumps. So those are the two main things that we have to keep in, in mind. Okay, the heart pumps harder. Let's say there's more pressure. Think of the pipeline. If there's more pressure in the pipeline, then the, the, the source, the pump has to be, you know, pump work harder. So that's how we have high blood pressure. Now, blood pressure are me measured in two numbers. So you'd see that if you take your blood pressure, if you have a little machine at home or when you go to the doctor's office, there's a little, there's a blood pressure monitor that they take your blood pressure, first thing they do. There's a number that's on top that's called the systolic uh, pressure. And the lower number, which is less than the top one, is usually the diastolic pressure, okay? And um, basically they're saying America, America Heart Association, American Heart Association is saying that hypertension is considered if you're the top number or the systolic number, if it's 140 or greater, and if the bottom number or the diastolic number is 90 millimeters of mercury or less. So let's say 140 over 90, we are starting to look at hypertension in, you know, with those numbers. Now, just a basic look at hypertension in terms of, I'm sorry, hypertension in terms of um, the prevalence of hypertension. Who gets hypertension? Where do we see hypertension? Now, the prevalence of high blood pressure, it comes with age, and it's about 7% of those with hypertension are aged 18 to 39. Believe it or not, the younger folks are getting hypertension, as we see, as statistics show. So between 7% of the population between ages 18 to 39 are suffering from high blood pressure. 33%. The same boy, no, it's the same. Yeah, please mute, mute your phones, please. Yes, 33% are age 40 to 59. So it seems as we get older, the number, the percentage or the, the percentile is getting greater. So 64% are over the age of 60. But do remember that the younger folks, 18 to 39, though a small percentage, they're also included in um, the diagnosis of hypertension. So, like I said, the older we get, the higher the numbers become. Now, where do we find, let's talk about hypertension in the Caribbean. It's globally, it's in the Caribbean also. It is responsible for 51% of deaths due to cerebral disease. Stroke, a lot of people, if we look around us, wherever we live, I can pick any place on the earth, a lot of people are, if not being debilitated by stroke, they're dying of stroke. And the, the, one of the reason is high blood pressure and we'll examine why a high blood pressure causes stroke that leads to death, that can lead to death, okay? Or the 5% of deaths are due to ischemic heart disease also which are leading, is the leading cause of death in the Caribbean. So I know from experience in the Caribbean, we have a rich diet. We have a rich array of food that we cook, very tasty, a lot of salt. I'm not saying that's the only contributing factor, 
There are other contributing factors, but I can easily point to diet and, um, you know, their ex diet exercise, there are different things which we'll get to. But the, the, if, just to pick on the diet for a minute, our diet is rich in salt, the kind of foods that we eat, you know, the tasty foods that we make. So that's part of one of the reason, just part of it, why there's such a high risk of hypertension that leads to stroke and death in the Caribbean islands. Also other parts of the world. Yes, yes. ma'am. Uh, Professor Small. Okay, I'm Professor Claudette Small. I just want to reiterate on something that um, the speaker mentioned. Uh, with, uh, with regards to adherence to medication, yes. especially with high blood pressure. It's very important. And one thing that um, the speaker mentioned was um, adherence, especially because of sexual dysfunction. Yes. A lot of men, a lot of men stop taking the blood pressure medication because of sexual dysfunction. And um, as a speaker, we into a story. I'm going to tell you a story, true things, true <laughs> story. My brother, um, he was in his early 40s. Is your high blood pressure? Genetic, his mother has high blood pressure. And um, he was working out on in Queens, in, on Jamaica Avenue at Ballet's um, gym. And he had a stroke. That was his first stroke. Yeah. And I was working at Mary Macleod Hospital, so it was like a block from where it happened. So when he came, I rushed down to the ER. He got medications, everything, time, 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 on a timely manner. He came up on the floor, and I asked a doctor to go and talk to him because I knew why that stroke happened. And the doctor went and spoke with him and said, hey, man, I mean, what are you doing? There are so many blood pressure medications I mean, if one is not working for you, take another one. And he spent maybe about 20 minutes talking to him. He left the hospital, went home, and about less than six months, it happened again. Same, he wasn't taking the medication because of sexual dysfunction. Ooh, okay. And somebody spoke to him, somebody who talked his language, and he still was non-compliant. He had a second stroke. The first stroke he had, he was out, I mean, signs and symptoms afterwards, maybe minimal, minimal effect. And after this second stroke, he was home alone. So there you go. Because okay. remember, which, especially with, with stroke, timing is important. When you get the medication, it's important. And he was home alone. So no medication. So right now, you know where he is? He's still in a rehab. And, and, and this is like, 10 years ago, and he's still in the rear. Oh, Lord. Young, 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 young guy. Yes, yes. Can hardly walk, has to be maybe, can hardly feed himself. So, what I want to read to it this evening is the importance patients need to understand, especially men, need to understand the importance of compliance with medication. Because, I mean, if not, this blood pressure can kill you. Read to it. Silent killer, no signs and symptoms, adherence to medication. And I mean, a lot of patients with high blood pressure, when the doctor gives them medication, they throw it, throw, throw it away or put it down. I have a cousin, same thing, and she's female. And now she has, I mean, about 10 stents in her heart because of the high blood pressure. Yes. So my input today to this forum is, adherence to medication, especially men. If one doesn't work, there are a, a lot of blood pressure medications, but please do not stop taking the blood pressure medications because of sexual dysfunction. And again, a tip this from um, the Stroke Foundation. At age 50, people with pressure, high blood pressure, live um, a life expectancy with people with regular blood pressure, life expectancy is five years more than somebody who has high blood pressure. So that alone in itself should um, encourage patients or people in general, anybody on the street, family to take blood pressure medications. Okay, and again, reiterate, um, American Stroke Association, people with high blood pressure 
have a significantly high risk of stroke. There's no if ands or buts about it. No if ands or about it. And this I was surprised to find out more than uh, more than one in three American adults have high blood pressure. Yes. And don't even know it. Right. So my to this forum today is adherence. If one doesn't work, try another one. Okay? Thank you.